Hello. My name is Ed Warburton, and I am going to walk you through the installation of Vector Linux. I am using the light version for this demonstration because I want to demonstrate how Vector Linux can be used on almost any computer. You can download Vector Linux at vectorlinux.com. Once it is downloaded, you can use a program to check the MD5 sum that is also located at vectorlinux.com. You can just try out Vector Linux using the live version or do a complete install using one of the other images. Once you have decided to install and have made or bought a CD, then you can insert the CD into your computer and restart. The first screen you see looks like this and allows you to choose the kernel you need. Most people can just push enter here. Pushing F1 shows the available kernels. After you choose a kernel it will boot and you can see output on the screen in text. After a few seconds you should see the screen. The screen welcomes you to Vector Linux, displays processor AM and kernel version used by your computer. To continue press enter. The next screen allows you to choose a keymap, continue with install, repair lilo, or exit to kernel shell. If you use an ANAS keyboard, you need to change the keymap to suit your needs. The lilo option allows you to reinstall lilo if you cannot boot into any of your partitions. The exit command gives you a Linux shell where you can manually install or partition. Most people can skip to install where Linux will find your media. If everything is okay, you will see your distro version. You can select yes if this is the right one. If you get an error, Linux might not be able to mount the media or it might be corrupted. The vector Linux forums might be able to provide any further help. The first option on the next screen includes notes about the version of vector Linux you have. Resize allows you to steal hard drive space from another OS on your computer, given you have extra space. If you have a new or unused hard drive, you should choose FDISC. These two topics can get complicated so you should find help online. For the purposes of this how, I have created a primary partition and swap drive in FDISC already. Remember if you have to change partitions you need to reboot. The install option continues to the next screen. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. If you choose any one of these it will go down the others in the list automatically. If you want to make sure that you get the installation right, you should check the installation files. Otherwise you should choose the second if you have to set a swap partition. The third is required and sets where you want to install Vector Linux. If you are setting the swap partition, the screen will look something like this. The X means that the partition is selected. Spacebar can select or unselect it. The root partition is the next screen. Do not select the dummy option. One of the other options you can select for your root partition. The root partition is where Vector Linux is actually installed. Next you can choose the file system to use. This is just based on preference and anyone will do. However, the default is acceptable. Now you can add additional partitions. These are based on preference and not necessary. Done will continue with the installation. Now choose your bulk packages. Most people can unselect the dev tools and kernel source. These are packages for programmers. GUI tools are usually needed. These are necessary for the user-friendly desktop. Then you get to choose more specific packages. You can also select or unselect these for space. Finally, if you have everything just right, you can go ahead and install. After this point, there is no turning back, however. The installer will tell you that you can leave. During the installation, you can see the contributors' names scroll across the top. Afterwards, there is some final configuration to done. Happy vectoring!